OER Info is live in Bristol at OER 18 and we're here with Judith from Communia. Mm -hmm. Communia is working on fixing copyright in Europe and my question would simply be what's wrong about copyright in Europe? Um, so, there's nothing wrong solely on copyright. Uh, what's wrong is uh, between the balance between copyright and exceptions and limitations. So on the one hand we have copyright, which is the right of the rights holder, and on the other hand we have education exceptions, for, instance, for education, um, that um, allow use of copyrighted protected content for education. And we find this very important because um, education is in a public interest of us all. Uh, so there should be a good balance between, on the one hand, the rights of the copyright holder and the other hand, the rights of the society. Um, so for that we argue for a very balanced copyright. So that means um, there's nothing wrong specifically only with copyright but with how it's used against the education exception. And we want um, teachers to be able to use copyright protected content for the benefits of their students. And for that we need a good education exception that is broad and allows for openness and use in schools. Do you have an um, example on what's happening now or what might happen in the future? Yes, most certainly. So right now um, the European Commission in 2016 has launched uh, a copyright directive for copyright in a digital single market. Um, and this directive includes an education exception that's mandatory, which we really like, which means that the education exception will be the same in all the member states of the European Union. Um, there's only one downside to this education exception, which is that it can be overridden by licenses which means that the education exception doesn't always apply but then sometimes if there are licenses available on the market um, uh, schools need to use the licenses and we are not very happy with it because this will keep up a very fragmented legal framework because you will have different licenses on the market and schools will need to find out which licenses are available uh, and then use the, the terms and conditions that are in the license which are often more restrictive than the education exception would be. And how do publishers think they, they, they can control this thing? Um, uh, I don't want to speak for them, uh, but uh, what we see happening very often is that they are afraid that um, because of new technology, their business models might be in danger. So they are finding new ways to, in order to make money, which is very understandable. Um, but we want to prevent it to be... Um, in such a way that it will limit uh, education or that it will harm other public interests. Um, yeah. Do we have to be afraid that, that uh, someone is coming into the classroom or to school to, to control if we have the right licenses? Yes, uh, we are afraid for that. Uh, we looked at a lot of li different licenses, especially licenses in the UK uh, allowed a lot of um, well, they set a lot of terms and conditions that were really unfair, such as uh, the possibility to enter the premises of the schools. Uh, if the, the publisher found it necessary to do that, they could do that under the licenses agreements. Uh, so we would argue, uh, not all licenses are bad, uh, so we would argue for licenses without these unfair terms and conditions, or even better, for just an education exception without licenses. Just to, 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 to be precise, this is in place in the UK now, this, uh, this licensing which allows publishers to enter schools? Uh, yeah, there are licenses that allow uh, publishers to enter schools, yes. Do you think that the, the uh, educators in school know about what, they, what there is in the licenses? Um, well, probably someone has said has signed it off, so someone knows about it, I assume, but I don't think individual teachers are aware of this. And I also don't think publishers always use these terms and conditions. They won't always execute these things, um, which makes it an even stronger case for just removing them from the agreement. Yeah. Where can people learn more about it or even support your course? Uh, you can visit us at Communia, which is www.communiaassociation.org, uh, or you can visit our campaign website, which is rightcopyright.eu, or you can visit um, the organization of the website of the organization I work directly for, which is kennisland.enl, which is we have abbreviated for everyone else who doesn't speak Dutch, which is kl.nl. Yes. <laughs> so thank you very much, Judith. All the best for your work and thank you for taking the time for this interview. Yes, thank you so much.